Hi everyone, um, my name is Laura Cleary and I am zooming in here from Dublin in Child Vision. So today I'm just going to talk to you about the benefits of incorporating music into O&M instruction for preschool and early, early primary school aged children. So just briefly, um, a profile of our students here in Child Vision. We have a preschool, a primary school, uh, secondary school and lifelong learning students. So um, usually age, um, the ages range between 18 months and 24 years, as you can see on the screen. So just to start, music within our service. I mean, music has always played a very important role within our service. Um, in 2010, a clinical music therapy service was established to work with the children and young adults um, with, a, with VI and a range of complex needs. The core service is with the primary school, um, providing individual and group therapy sessions. There's also a service available for the secondary unit and lifelong learning students on campus. And uh, the music therapist, Bill Ahasi, he works collaboratively with the music educator um, and the teachers within the school. So music therapy, it engages people in a variety of musical experiences in order to restore, to maintain, or to improve functioning and um, quality of life. We know it focuses on the cognitive, the physical, psychological, and emotional needs. Um, and music therapy and music education, they're, they're both complementary, but they're very dis distinct disciplines. They both aim to facilitate the growth and the development of the students within the, the service and the, with the, who are involved. But the educator, um, she specializes in the acquisition of skills and knowledge and um, the music therapist, he works and uses music primarily as a way to achieve non-music goals. So I started to, it wasn't hard for me to notice how the, the love that a lot of our students had for music within the, the, the service. And I started wondering how I could use this for, to my advantage and how to incorporate it into O&M instruction. So my initial thoughts were to, to encourage reluctant students who didn't really want to, to leave their safe space within the preschool or within the classroom um, was to bring a musical toy with them and to play and work on auditory, um, auditory information, hiding the toy and searching for it with their canes. And then I did want to, to um, I wanted to work on more complex skills. So I started to do a little bit of research to see how, how I could, how I could do that. And when I started looking at the research, um, there were some notable pieces, particularly uh, Wendy Sapp in 2011, who wrote Somebody's Jumping on the Floor, incorporating music into orientation and mobility for preschoolers with visual impairments. So, um, SAP really, she discussed how many skills and concepts can be applied to children who are learning O&M and some concepts include positional in under um, sensory skills, including approaching versus retreating sounds and tactile input um, from the feet. And she highlighted several guidelines that can be used by specialists to create music um, that they can incorporate into O&M instruction. So First was to identify the objective and that each song should focus on just one or two concepts or skills because anything more than that would just be too, would be ineffective and too much for, for the children. She stated to find uh, the natural rhythm. So to the use of nat natural rhythm in, in keywords. So I found Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush was a really, really good song that our children responded to. So instead of Here We Go Round the Mulberry Bush, it was This Is The Way We Tap Our Cane, Tap Our Cane, etc. There'll be a lot of singing throughout this, apologies. <laughs> um, the use of repetition and word patterns. So we know that kids really enjoy repetition and they learn and it's an excellent tool for learning and for reinforcement. So, you know, row, row, row your boat became tap, tap, tap your cane, tap it left and right. And um, the more we repeat things, the more we repeat words, the more we repeat the, th the, the, the melody, the more the children will, will remember what it is that we're asking for them. Um, choosing a song that fits the rhythm. So children's songs, they use basic patterns that can be easily applied to different lyrics. Twinkle Twinkle and the alphabet song are both the same and 
what I did was I collaborated with Bill Ahasi, our, our music therapist here, and we used that that song in order to create a, a song focusing on the concepts and the skills that we wanted the children to learn. You're, I'm going to be playing that, that uh, song for you a little bit later on in the presentation. And then the importance of collaboration. I mean, if we collaborate with students and we collaborate with their par with parents and and uh, staff and professionals, it's so important. It involves evolving them, makes it much more enjoyable for the for the students, and makes it much more meaningful. So, again, the collaboration with Bill was really really important because he had skills that I didn't have, and he, I had knowledge that he didn't have in order to create this this beautiful piece of music that has been working really well for for our students. And Coleman in 2017 wrote the use of music to promote pur purposeful movement in children with visual impairments. And what it did was it highlighted how to incorporate auditory discrimi discrimination, sound localization and movement with preschool students um, who showed good independent independent travel skills and conceptual knowledge of auditory stimuli using the egg shaker game. So an egg shaker is the percussion-like instrument like a maracas. And the teacher in, in this, um, in this uh, article written by Coleman hid the egg shaker in the classroom, played a drum as the students searched for the, the item. It can be anything, but and if the student searched for the, the, the um, item, the if they got closer, the drum would bang louder. If it got quieter, they knew that they were going further away. And then as they got closer and the drum started to, to, to um, get louder and they knew they could switch from their searching techniques to their protective technique. They could switch from their travel techniques to their um, search techniques and their protective techniques. So there were really um, good pieces of research and really helped me with with starting to to really consider using music and um, music um, a lot more and songs in my own M training. So I'm just going to give you a brief um, a couple of different profiles on how music has helped um, some of our students here on campus. So first up, we have Ashling, and she has I know 23. This is uh, this particular piece of um work this workshop that we're in now is for under six year olds but I actually I, I couldn't leave her out because she has such a gift in music and she was a preschooler once so we're just going to say that uh for the purpose of this it was she she couldn't be left out she um has such a gift of music and however she has some difficulty in stressful environments and she often uses music as a means of 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 um easing anxiety Variety. She doesn't necessarily use cane songs or specific O and M related songs. She but just follows the rhythm and helps her in these difficult situations. Um, and it helps and it helps her to to regulate music does. So it's also a huge motivation for her to get active and promote physical development. On the bottom uh, of the screen, you're going to see a photograph of a transformation pod which is a new um, technology and equipment that's used in rehabilitation and mobility for those who find it difficult to partake in traditional methods of exercise. So the machine promotes safety as the students are fastened onto the pod by an outer garment or skirt, which helps them to stay in place on the treadmill so they won't fall off, slip off or, or lose their footing at all. And Ashling uses this three times a week, blaring the music out, singing, and it makes it so much more enjoyable for her and has been such an amazing tool for her in order to be, um, to be more physically, physically active. Next, we have Ethan. And when Ethan started his mobility training, he was very um, distracted, we found. He was, it was difficult to get him motivated. He was a chatterbox and all he wanted to do was chat about nothing that was related to um, the, the, the concepts and skills we were trying to teach him. So uh, we loved his, his, we loved having, having the chats, but it was time to focus and get, get to, um, get get down to work and in order to to do that I realized his love for music and I said okay how can I use this in order to to help him um to motivate him and when he realized that 
we were learning skills and we were learning um, techniques that were going to be able to help him to get to the music room. And when we were learning techniques that were going to be able to help him to get to the drums, his absolute favorite thing, then he was much more engaged and it was a reward for his positive interaction as well. So all of these um, music had such a, a huge, huge influence on his ability to engage in the classroom, uh, engage in, in all of his sessions and um, to within within all of his his own um, work. Um, so next up we have Liam. Liam is uh, five, and he is in our preschool. We have been working on trying to encourage Liam to explore the environment and to to get out of the classroom. Uh, all last year, he had a lot of difficulties getting stuck. What I mean when I say getting stuck is that he. Um, found a point in the wall. It was a different one every single time and he didn't want to move from that point. There was nothing in particular that was interesting or engaging about it. It was just a time where he said, I can't, he couldn't go any further. So we needed to um, physically help him to get back to class. That was, we had to carry him because it was just too much for him and we had to leave. So I started thinking about how we could bring his love of music and his love of music is is incredible just just as the others are into his sessions so by, by teaching him um or to help him teach him with his orientation skills and to keep him going we use a song called I am trailing again created by Bilahasi um uh, in collaboration with myself and we were we have I'd love to say that it has been completely successful. It hasn't. It's still a work in progress. And that's the whole point of, of a lot of these these um, songs. Repetition is essential. Now he doesn't get stuck as much. He does go. There are times where he says, no, 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 I don't want to, to do that song. And that's absolutely fine. We, we completely respect that. But he is a lot more interested in exploring the environment now. He does listen to the songs. He loves This Is The Way We Tap Your Cane. I was on leave for a few months when I came back and he had been working with another specialist. The first thing he said to me was, Laura, this is the way we tap our cane. And I said, yes, fantastic. And he remembered that. He remembered me and he remembered the songs that I was teaching him. And that was really a, a proof to me that this that this was a, a really useful, um, useful concept of using music with O&M. Um, next, we have Fiona, and Fiona is uh, now in the primary school, and she used used um, music as a way of memorizing techniques through song. So she loved. She, uh, sorry, I'm I'm trying I'm trying to figure out where I should start with Fiona. She absolutely loves music. Everything needed to be sung for with Fiona to a point where I was like, okay, is this actually beneficial to her now, or is it time? to try to pair it back. And at one point, everything needed to be sung. And I was thinking, this is really not an effective tool for her because she is missing out on the other important information that are that's in the environment. But when we are learning specific techniques, um, it was it was absolutely fantastic. And we have now learned to, to pair it down with Fiona and she knows that she can't be singing throughout every single moment of our session, which she was doing. She was singing, we're passing the green wall. She'd be singing everything and it wouldn't be be relevant to her particular um, uh, her particular um, goals that we, we had in mind. But the cane skills, she was memorizing um, how to get through, how to to get through a door and how to navigate through a door. And she called her cane Caney. And we um, changed Frere Jaca to, this is from Frere Jaca to, um, Caney found the door, Caney found the door. And she popped up and she popped up. Caney goes through first, Caney goes through first to make sure it's safe, to make sure it's safe. And now Fiona knows she can do it. She can do it all. And she remembers if she's like, oh, oh, and she forgets that she needs to keep the cane going through the door first, which is often what happened. She'd be pushing the door open and she'd lead with her feet. Now she remembers she needs to put her cane through the, the door first to make sure that there's no steps, to make sure that there's no obstacles within her way. Um, room identification. So 
for Fiona, we were trying, she was getting a little bit disoriented in her class, in her school. We were trying to teach her how to um, navigate and to know what classroom is where. And at her request and collaborating with her, she wanted to adapt the planet song, there are eight planets in the solar system, to there are eight planets in our primary school, which we did. And that has really helped her. So now she's able to to think, OK, I'm outside the music room and she's she she kind of would go through the songs herself and the little verse in her head and she'd be able to find her way back to um her her classroom. So that is um Fiona. It is. um. Again, a work in progress. She's doing absolutely brilliantly, but we need to pair it back to make sure that it's only for um, specific goals. And we are, as as SAP said, identifying the objective because we want to make sure that we're using it correctly. So a lot of the songs were kind of uh, for were cane songs. This is the way we tap our cane, tap our cane, and. There are other songs that we other techniques that I wanted to teach and they weren't they were pre cane skills. So there were um, upper body protection, for example, body awareness, language development. All of these were important skills that I wanted to to try and use music as a means for um, as a means for for learning. So this little song here. Um, has so much information in it, but it can be broken down and it can be broken down to teach the children, you know, it can be one, two little phrase, two, two little parts of it if you're learning upper body protection. So it's put your arm up, bend your elbow, keep your fingers nice and straight. Your hand will protect you, so you do not bump your face, ouch. And then it goes on. You don't have to listen to my voice singing all that. So the benefits of using cane songs, I mean, they're they're so they're so important. I I I have found more benefits than using using music than I have with any other kind of um tool in within the 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 services of the preschool, most certainly. So they promote engagement by incorporating music into to training. It can help the learning experience be much more engaging for for the children. Um, they can the students can feel much more comfortable and confident, and they learn in in a fun and a musical way. Um, it builds cane skills, so they they're it helps them to develop the fundamental cane skills, and it's essential for for um for safe for safe and effective mobility. Um, they can learn how to properly hold and use their cane well. So here, the grip of the cane stays in my hand, in my hand, in my hand. The tip on the cane stays on the ground. So these, I had students who, who dropped the cane constantly, dropped it constantly. We sang this song and then the last, last week, only one of my students as we came back to the class said, Laura, the grip of the stain stays in my hand. I said, yes, it does. Well done. So she's remembering that she can't be dropping it and she knows that she, she has to keep that cane in her hand when she is walking as opposed to just letting it go. Um, it enhances memory. So by incorporating songs into own and training, you know, it can develop a strong memory of how to use their cane. Just like um, Fiona remembering how to go through the doors and Liam, who uh, when he when I came back from leave, he he remembered all of the, the songs and the skills that I had taught him um, before before I had gone on leave. Um, it teaches orientation skills. So they can learn how to use their canes to locate objects and um, landmarks in their environment by following the rhythm of the songs. And uh, it also develops rhythm and coordination by um, moving to the beat of the song while using their canes. They can improve their balance, their coordination and their overall mobility. So I'm just going to play you guys uh, two of the songs that were um that were created by Bill that we use to help some of the students. So first up we have is My Hands Trailing and it is um, one of the pre-cane songs. My Hands Trailing My Hands Trailing My Hands Trailing Follow Oh my, 
So that can be taught to preschoolers, primary schoolers, or whoever um, you think would be a benefit to. Um, I think the older students now, while they might like the melody, they, they would already have those skills um, and they would already be familiar with the correct um, technique of trailing. So next up is uh, one little song that we, we did to help children to focus on the different textures and the different um, the different levels of, of um, that you can find under your cane. The ground feels different. Okay, so just, oh, hang on now. That was a little surprise addition. Back. So we know that music has to be used carefully and deliberately. As children, they need to learn how to orient themselves in the environment and they have to rely on their other skills to, to figure out what's going on. Um, if music is used excessively, the student may not learn how to hone in on important sounds. Um, incorporating music into cane training, it can be fun and it can be an effective way to develop the skills, essential skills. And, you know, it promotes engagement, it builds cane skills, enhances memory, it teaches orientation skills and it develops rhythm and coordination. By using appropriate songs, repeating them often, encouraging participation and integrating with other O&M techniques, cane songs can be a valuable tool in helping children to develop the skills to navigate the world safely and independently. So I'm going to, I have one more thing that I have to show you. And this was an, something that was filmed yesterday and very quickly put in last night because I couldn't not share it. So this little girl here is in the preschool and um, she, we have been working on prepositional concepts, pre-cane skills, language development. She has never spoken a word in the preschool. It, she, she talks at home with mom and dad, but she's been in the preschool for over two years and has never spoken a word. She communicates other ways, smiles, the most beautiful smile in the world, but she has never spoken a word. Okay, I'm gonna play you a little video. The rabbit's hiding. In the house. In the house. In the house. The rabbit's hiding. In the house. <laughs> In sense and grow. Good job. Well done. So you can see even her little face when she's covering her mouth. She's like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm, I'm using my words here. Um, I spoke to mom yesterday afternoon and she was absolutely delighted with the, the progress that she has made. And I suppose to me, it was why we do what we do. This is the reason. I mean, music has such power and it has such, um, it brings such joy to these children. And I really hope that, um, that some of you guys have gotten some some um, some clues and tips on on how we can incorporate it into your own um, mobility training because to me it is has been absolutely fantastic and I've seen huge changes in the children since I started to to use mo music throughout O and M training. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>